Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic of discussion is on options in IPv4. In one of my video lecture, previous video lecture that is lecture number 15, I have explained the uh, IPv4 header format wherein I have explained about the different fields and the last one in that IPv4 header format, if you remember, if you recall that IPv4 header format, the last row was mentioned as options. So that particular last row information that is options, I will be explaining it today in today's session. So let us see the different options that are available in the IPv4 header. So let us first uh, see the IPD, IPv4 datagram structure. So it was like you have the header part and you have the payload part. So what is that IP datagram is divided into two parts, the header part and the payload part. What is the size of this header? It starts from 20 that is minimum and the maximum is 60 bytes, fine. This is the header part. Now in this particular header part, whatever I have explained in lecture number 15, the header which is consisting of 20 bytes, all those fields that this information about the, all those fields I have explained. The one which is pending is the options here. So if header is minimum 20 bytes, maximum 60 bytes, then you can uh, find out from this what should be the size of the options. So options will be definitely what? It should be of 40 bytes because 20 bytes mandatory header part is there. Fine. My minimum value of the header should be there as 20 bytes. But maximum value for the header will be what? 60 bytes. This is the minimum value of header. And the maximum value of header is 60. Maximum value is 60 bytes. So if maximum value is 60, header is 20 bytes, then the remaining part is how much? 40 bytes. Those bytes are under the heading called as options. As the name itself indicates what it is optional. Every IP datagram may not have the options included. So let us see if options are included in the IP before IP header, then what are the different options? Options can be categorized into two types, single byte options, multiple byte options. And in multiple byte, we have these four different, okay, the four different uh, types here. And in single byte, we have the other two that is no operation and one byte option. So let us see one by one. The multiple byte options is what? The record root. Record root. Record root, as the name indicates, it, rec it records the root. Actually, what this particular root information consists of? It consists of the routers, okay? The IP datagram is visiting different routers from the source to the de de destination. So, which are the different routers this IP datagram visits? Those information, that is those routers information will be included in the record root option. So, if you take this as a one the different network scenario scenario if it is like you have a scenario like this you have r1 r2 and r3 so if this is the case then what will happen the ip packet starts from the source fine it moves towards the destination as and when it is moving it is including what the routers information which it is which it is visiting now suppose if it is visiting r1 it will include R1. Next, it crosses R2. That means it comes to R2. Then definitely R2 and R4, R1 information will be there. Apart from what? Apart from the source IP address, other things will be there definitely. The destination IP address, fine. All those things will be included. But apart from that, in the options part of the IP datagram, it is going to include all the datagrams. And then next is what? It includes R3, R2, R1. After it, visits the router R3. So finally, it reaches the destination. All the different routers that are on the way from the source to the destination, that means the whichever routers the IP datagram is visiting, those routers IP addresses will be included. Now, how many IP, how many information about how many routers it will include? So there can be two questions here, simple objective type questions. How many routers a particular IP datagram can visit or that means the record root option can include information about how many routers. And one more thing, 
the other question what it can be i'll just tell you first if i answer this particular question then you'll be able to answer the second part of the question also how many maximum routers information it can include see first and foremost thing how to find out is you rem uh, out of that maximum see we have seen that header is what maximum minimum 20 and maximum what 60 maximum is 60 bytes options is having how many bytes 40 bytes now when it is including information about every router the router information is what the ip address of the router and ip address of the router is in ipv4 it is 32 bits fine then you have how many 40 bytes for the option but each router's ip address is of 32 bytes that is 4 bytes so maximum how many routers it can visit if it is 40 bytes option and moreover each uh, ip address of the router is 4 bytes 4 divided 40 divided by 4 is it can visit 10 routers but normally see even though it has got a space to record what complete 40 bytes here but still some space has to be kept here to convey the other information also in the options just including the ip addresses of the routers is not sufficient some extra information is also included there like this information contains about the uh, routers that are getting visited something so that for that also some space has to be kept so for that reason only so we can make that maximum nine routers ip addresses of nine routers it can visit that is how much 36 bytes fine so out of 40 watt now 36 bytes means it is recording the ip addresses of the nine routers and remaining is what for four bytes is used to convey some other information or related to this information only about the record route because it is recording so that particular information will also get included so this is about the record route option the next one is the strict source route for that i will just slightly change the network scenario to explain the strict strict source route let us take that this source is connected to this default router and uh, okay you have different ways or different routes to reach to the destination fine and also we can make uh, this router is connected to this so many possibilities are there it can travel like this so the source packet can travel like this fine the source packet can travel like this so now this ip packet which comes from the source host is trying to include what information about the routers that the da datagram should must and should compulsorily visit so that means here the packet will say r1 r2 r3 and r4 visit uh, routers has to be visited that means it is taking this path otherwise we have other options also r5 r6 r7 r8 r9 isn't it so either it can go okay visit r1 r2 r3 or r4 so whichever route whichever routers the ip datagram has to visit that information is mentioned from the source itself so strict source route means strictly you follow the ip addresses of the routers that are mentioned here if it is mentioned no follow r1 r2 r5 r6 and then uh, r4 then that particular information will be included the other one loose source route is it is mentioned that r1 r2 r3 out of this r1 r2 r3 r4 you can take the ip packet can take okay i can visit out of these four routers two or three may deviate slightly also so suppose if it is mentioned as r1 r2 r3 and r4 strict in the strict route in the loose source route the packet can take like this r1 r2 r3 r6 and then r4 so there is some what relaxation here you can visit other routers as well we have the timestamp here timestamp indicates what see timestamp the general meaning is what a sequence of characters here so this datagram which is visiting the routers so the timestamp will include what it includes actually the datagram travels from one router to another router so the timestamp the time of the datagram processing the time at which the datagram is getting processed by each of the routers will also get included so that value that time is called as the timestamp normally timestamp will have what uh, complete information about the time some timestamps we have seen that starts from the year okay like 2007 okay they want to mention the month also then uh, date day time in time also hours minutes seconds and milliseconds 
So out of this so many uh, this one information about the time. So that particular time will get included. That is why the name is given as here timestamp and how it will help. It will help the users to track the behavior of the internet behavior of the routers in the internet this timestamp value and also we can estimate with the timestamp what we can estimate the time taken for a datagram to travel from one router to another router. Look here we are not saying the time we can calculate the time taken from the or we can determine the time taken by the IP datagram to travel from router R2 to R3. We are saying we can estimate the word estimate is used because see the routers though they may use the universal time but still their local clocks may not be synchronized that is the reason we use the word here estimate estimate so this is how this timestamp option will get included then we have the other category in the options is single byte options and in that single byte we have no operation and one byte option so no operation as the name indicates it is not going to convey any information in the IP datagram of the option but it is included as a option. So what can be the reason? No operation. It is used as a filler between two options. The other one is one byte option. You are using one byte mainly for the RD. Normally okay minimum is 20 bytes of header. Now if you are saying no after adding the uh, two uh, like after adding some options it is coming to 27. 27 by 4 not divisible so it is not in multiples of 4 that is the reason you require 1 byte here to make it 28. So that is why we say this used as a padding here. So this is the explanation for the single byte options and multiple byte options of the IPv4 header. Hope it, the explanation is clear. Bye bye take care.